あああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああ A real extensive show today on bass fishing. A lot of guys、um, ask me, you know, how do you work a worm? How do you work a spinner bait? What kind of cover should you be looking for? Those are the kind of things today that we're going to cover on Delaware Valley Outdoors. So stay tuned and、uh, we'll see if we can catch some fish. What I'm doing this morning is I'm using a, a spinner bait, a little fish, and it's a chartreuse quarter ounce spinner bait with a, with a copper blade. What I use a, a spinner bait for is what I call a fast bait. That means that I can cover a lot of territory and really pick up on some fish. Now, I'm just trying to locate fish right now. I'm just trying to locate them.、I'm、going through here, you can see that there's a ton of structure here. And I'm picking fish off of isolated cover. Now, I'm just throwing it into the wood,、uh, the dead wood that we have here. Now, another thing about a spinnerbait is that it's basically weedless. So I'm not worried about getting hung up in the bushes, but I want to put my bait right up into the bushes as close as I can. So I'm not really worried about, about losing the bait. It's pretty much weedless. Target your bait at those. Those little dips, those little cuts. And most of the, most of the hits that I'm getting are, are, are right off the bank. Look at that, right off the bank, like I mentioned. The, right, the fish are laying right up on the bank. So that's where I say you've got to be able to position your fish, your,、uh, position your lure right where these fish are. And that was, you can just see where we took that right off the bank. And that's where, these, that's where these fish are laying, but that's where you have to, you, have, you can't be afraid to throw your lure up in there. One thing that you want to remember also when you're fishing a place like this is because of the fact that we have so much cover in here that you're going to need a, a, a good, decent、uh, rod with some, some, some backbone to it to get these fish out. If you really hang a big fish, I see some fish working here, you get a big fish. There we go. Into,、uh, into this rock, t h i s stumps and stuff. A little better fish here.、Um, again, you're going to have to get it. You're going to have to get that fish out. And if you don't have the line. Oh, come on, there, sweetheart. Ooh.、Um, nice little fish. You don't have the, the, the line on, good strong line. Fish is just going to tear you off. I'm using about the. 14 pound test here.、Uh, it's pretty strong. That'll, be, get, that'll get enough out of here. And if we have to, we'll go back in and get the fish if we had to. But you're going to need that. You're going to need to be able to get that fish away away from the, the, the stick ups, the structure here. And again, what else I'm doing is just throw into isolated cover back up in there. And again, don't be afraid. That's the whole thing. I think most people. When they,、um, when they see a lot of this stuff, they go, oh my gosh, I don't want to throw my three dollar, four dollar spinner bait or my, my crank bait up in there.、Uh, but that's what you have to do. You can't be afraid. You can't be afraid to, to put your, your bait up in there. That's where the fish are going to be. One other thing that、uh, we're working a spinner bait here now is that just don't cast one time, go back. Go back to a piece of structure a couple of different times at different angles. Now I'm going to cast back behind some of this stuff that I've already, I've already went over with my lure. But a lot of times, <clears throat> the, the, the way you present your lure behind it,、uh, coming up the other side, a lot of times the fish want it a certain direction. I have no idea why, they're just positioned that way. 
or, or whatever. Now, we're going across some, some weedy areas here, so I'm trying to just tick the tops of the weeds as my bait is going through. Again, that's why you can work a spinnerbait real well, because you can control almost the depth of, of what you're doing. And I had a fish just, just smack it here when uh, I was just coming across. But, uh, go back to the pieces of structure. I know there's a lot here that we can just keep fishing. We really don't have to go back and back and back, but uh, one of the things that you, you should, there we go, uh, should remember, uh, I just went across this piece again. Better fish. Uh, just back through there with the spinnerbait. And again, it's really nice because it's fairly, it's fairly weedless. You don't have to, uh, you know, keep constantly worry about getting hung up. Even a plastic, a plastic worm, I'm sure will just do great here. We'll, we'll work that uh, a little later on. Nice fish here. Uh, these are the kind of lures that you could find out. That little fish, a nice healthy fish. Um, go back. Those are the kind of baits that uh, you want to use right now, early in the morning. You can use some top water, some stick baits, um, which would be just absolutely a riot here. But I'm using my spinnerbait almost, almost like a, like a buzz bait. I'm just bringing it right across the tops here. And the fish are coming right out of the weeds and hitting the bait. Now I took that pe that fish right here. Took that fish right off of this piece of isolated cover. Mike, you get a shot of that. Now that fish was just laying off of that. So when you see a piece of isolated cover, I always like to try that first. There's so much of the other stuff, but a lot of times some nice quality fish will be off of the of a sil single piece of of structure. One of the things about working a spinnerbait is get to know how that bait feels as it's going through the water as it telegraphs to you what's going on and a lot of times what I'll be doing is that when I hit something I'll let my bait uh, flutter down or what we call helicopter where it just drops down like that uh, but you have to know what your bait's doing because a lot of times when I bump something it's not a it's not a hit excuse me uh, it's just I'm hitting something and I have to know the difference between what a what a bump is and when a fish hits it. Again, all these fish are just coming out of this isolated cover. Uh, little stumps in here and I'm just bringing that bait oh, right across the top of the water. I'm trying to pick out some spots, but again, Jesus. One of the things you have to remember is what your bait is doing. And I, that's what I say, it's, what's the difference between uh, bouncing off a stump or a stick or something and a set in the hook on a fish. And I think that's when you really have to um, learn your bait, know what it's doing, and know exactly what the difference is between when, when you do have a fish uh, and when you have a strike and when it's just a stump so that I can let it flutter down. And I think that's a lot of guys miss it, especially with spinner baits. They don't realize um, how many times they're actually getting hit because they think, oh, I just hit a stump or I banged something. And a lot of times, let me get this out of here. A lot of times it's not true. It's that you got a fish on. So you really have to become aware of what your bait is doing and, and how it reacts in the water. Again, I brought that spinnerbait right across, a little better fish, um, right through that, and that one isolated piece of cover was 
don't it? Eh, nice little fish. Now these fish that we're catching this morning are some good, a little bit better sized fish, but they all seem to be in that 8, 10, uh, 10 to 12 inch, inch range. We had a few little, a few bigger ones. Now what, ordinarily what we would want to do now is probably switch to a, I would switch for a bigger fish, I'm going to, I'd go to a bigger bait. See if we can attract some. We probably won't get as many fish but we'll start to catch bigger, bigger, uh, uh, bigger fish, a larger, better size. Uh, again, even when you go um, to a, a like a worm or a jig, I think you'll start picking up some bigger fish, some quality fish when we do that. But right now, we're just kind of moving through here, searching, and see if we can pick up. And not that we won't catch a a big fish on a spinner bait. We've done that before. But a lot of times, you'll, you'll go to a, I'll go to a bigger bait, maybe a bigger spinner bait with a bigger blade, more more motion, more sound, more vibration, and a lot of times that'll trigger strike off a bigger fish because you know the old the added uh, big baits catch big fish, um, which is true because bigger fish will just go for that one one big bite. He doesn't have to worry about you know fighting off for something smaller with the other fish, so he'll just take a big big bite of something, which I hope is <laughs> basically my lure so most of the time. But again, use your spinner bait to find fish. And it's it's an excellent, excellent bait. Now what happened here, that fish hit, struck once, I dropped my bait down and the fish came right back to it. So a lot of times when, you, when you're using a, a bait like this uh, and you get a strike, just let it sit there for a second and then, then move it again because the fish can't stand it. He thinks he's stunned something and as soon as you take, you start moving that bait again, bam, he hits it. Yeah, we're just taking these fish right off of, right off of these dead trees. They're all about the same size, but we're just picking them up off of isolated cover. What I'm trying to do is see if we can find a pattern, maybe to pick up some bigger fish. That's why I went to the crankbait. A lot of times that'll pick up a bigger fish, but the, the fish didn't seem to want that. They wanted the, they want this the spinnerbait. Uh, vibration. I'm going to try doing some worming now. One of my favorite ways to worm versus a Texas rig or a Carolina rig is I use this. It's a Mr. Key, Twister Keeper hook and it has a little barb on it and it's real easy. A lot of guys uh, are confused as to how to Texas rig it. I'll get it straight. With this, all I do is push it through onto the little barb, hang my worm straight, and then run my hook right through. And there we have it. It's so simple. You let it wait, it drops down, your tail will be like this. It's weedless, and it's very simple. A lot of, a lot of guys have trouble with the, the the other weights and stuff, and I love this. It's, it's so simple. Uh, they have some weight forward ones too now, 
But I like this one. It's very easy to hook and it does the same thing as, as a Texas rig. Uh, and you keep your, nice, your worm nice and straight. I want to see if you can get that. That's most important to keep the worm straight. I'm going to flip this up into some bushes. I did have one hit before and I, I set the hook and actually caught a log, but we're going to try this now. It's pretty weedy, so I'm going to flip it up in here and see what we can come up with. <laughs> see, that fish is just, they're just picking up and running with it. What we're having, <laughs> situation is that I'm, I'm over a, a rubble rock pile here, a lot of rubble, and I'm bouncing the worm through the, the rocks, and the fish are I'm picking up fish, but they're running with it. <laughs> and it's real hard to, to, to pick them up after they get running with it, if you're bouncing over the rock. So again, trying to stay in contact with the bait, and we're in about 15 feet of water, so that's coming off of that. Uh, rock pile that we have here and and dropping off and when you when it's dropping off the fish are evidently right on that edge and they're picking it up and running with it better fish. Again, this fish just hit as soon as I, I flipped it up into those bushes. He, uh, he hit the worm. I'm working the worm real slow, just bouncing it, really. I think that's one of the things that you got to get used to, is taking your time with the worm and really picking things apart. You don't have to keep moving, uh, such as uh, when you're using a spinner bait or something like that, where you just keep moving. Now, I can stay right in here and I'll bet you I'll pick up another uh, couple of fish just worming this uh, real slow. Seems that you will do one thing and that you go through some worms. I try to change my bait off and when I'm worming because the, the worms get uh, tore up, they get ripped from hitting rocks and, and whatnot. And you want to have your bait really presented uh, nicely. Now, sometimes also, if I find that the fish are hitting short, I'll shorten up this worm, and I'm going to go to a little uh, smaller worm, to a slider worm, about a six-inch slider worm in a little bit, uh, and see if we can change the, some tactics here. Just eating this worm up now. And what I wanted to show you is I want to bring the reel rod down, and when I come back, that's where I want to set the hook. And that's what you got to do. Now that fish was on for a bit, just swimming, but I wanted to show you how to really set the hook on a bass or on any fish, really. So you really got to bring your rod tip down, get the slack out, and then set the hook. Because you really have to drive that hook home, because you're pretty far out. You may be in 15, 20 feet of water. So you have a lot of, lot of uh, a slack that you really don't realize uh, in your line. So when you, when you do set the hook, make sure you set it really hard. Sometimes you're going to get hung, let's face it, there's no two ways about it. Um, you got to take that chance. That's the whole thing. So when you do that, you bring your rod tip down, get your slack out, and then come back with all the power that you possibly can. I always stand up when I'm fishing because I don't feel that I get enough power uh, out of my hook set when, when I'm sitting down. So a lot of times, uh, guys that are sitting down really don't get the, the major hook set that they really shouldn't. I think they lose fish because they don't have the, the real set on the fish. try to go back over this rubble pile again. 
And what I'm doing, I'm using a deep diver and I'm going to bang the rocks with my, with my lure. I want, I want my lure to really hit the, the rocks. And the, the lure that I had on before wasn't as, uh, wasn't, didn't have a big enough lip. It was a sh more shallower dive and it wasn't getting down where I wanted it to be. Since I saw that we had 20 feet of water with us, uh, I, I went over to a deeper diver and we started picking up fish. And I'm also using a much longer rod now and I'm making longer casts. That way I can get my lure down into the most productive zone, uh, fish catching zone, longer for a longer period of time. I was just using a short cast by the time my lure actually re reached the, the proper depth, it would only be maybe say covering that much of the water underground. This way I have here, I have a longer uh, period of time when the lure is in the strike zone. So you want to make longer casts with these deep divers to get them down. That's why the longer rods became real popular because you can really get a cast out there. It's a long handle and I can really, I can really drive this lure uh, a, a good distance. And I can use two hands and really, really get some distance on it. And I think that's important because you want your lure in the water, down under the water as long as possible. And that's the whole ticket to this. See if we can spin us around a little bit. Now well, picked up another fish here. This was a plastic worm. Real dark fish, dark back. All right, we're gonna take a break in a minute here and come back with the tackle box section of. Delaware Valley Outdoor. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back with the uh, tackle box section of Delaware Valley Outdoors. And this morning we started out with a uh, spinnerbait. Let me go over this one. We used a quarter ounce spinnerbait with a, a copper blade. Uh, and I put a what we call a split tail eel as a trailer on the, the chartreuse bait. Uh, Worked real well, we caught a lot of fish. Now I use this bait again as a, a quick bait, a fast bait to find fish. Uh, we went through this, we can move along here versus when I get to the worm section where you have to slow down and really work a piece of structure. Uh, the fish really like this. They like the vibration on, out of this one. We went to a crank bait uh, and, and we caught fish, but not as many. I think the spinner bait in this, in this situation today well, was the ticket to really use. Again, it's just a quarter ounce with a little black head. It doesn't really matter what color head, I don't think. But I think the color was uh, important with the chartreuse. And I like the copper blade in that sense because of the, the cloudiness we had today. I didn't want a real lot of flash. Uh, I just like a little darker blade on, on mine today. We then went to a worming situation and I used uh, a Mr. Twister keeper head and I like it because it's real easy to to hook up the worm. Uh, a lot of guys will do Texas rigging, Carolina rigging, or anything like that and it becomes complicated for them. I think this is like the easiest way to start out to learn how to worm fish and that's to use the, the keeper hook and it has a little probe. I don't know if you can catch that. I see it back in my hand. A little probe there that you just slide into the head of the worm, just like that. And then you just drop your hook down and put the hook point right through. Now make sure that the worm is in a straight line. Now we used the worm today that was, again, with contrast, and we had some fish that actually just came and bit the back of this thing off. So you can see that the contrast is very important. Now, I used a, a black worm with a blue tail. I had other colors, and I, I did quite well. This one, I just liked it because of the contrast in that. We, we used a, a seven-foot worming rod. I had a smaller rod on this morning, but I wasn't, been a, I wasn't able to hook the fish uh, as well, so I went back to a, to a seven-foot rod and, and did a lot better. We used heavy test. I got 14-pound test uh, line on this because 
as you can see, um, we have a lot of cover here, a lot of wood, a lot of stick-ups, and we're really getting hung up, and I could really pull the, the fish out of, of the deep cover. The last bait that we used was a crankbait. And here's the size crankbait we used. It was a, a Bill Norman's bait. I don't care what kind it was. But again, we have a black back, a chartreuse sides. I want the contrast again. It's a pretty deep diver. Now, we, we went through the lake, and we found that the lake's about 20 to about 25 feet in depth. And I, I had a smaller crankbait on there, and I wasn't getting down because I couldn't feel the, the bait hit the bottom. And that's very, very important. You want the bait to be able to dig down, bounce off these logs, bounce off the rocks. We had some riprap that we fished over there, and we caught fish off of that. Uh, but you want to really dig down. Don't be afraid to throw your bait in there. Most of the time, that bait, when it hits something, will do this. You won't really get stuck like that. And a lot of times, you just release the tension, the bait will rise up and just go. So again, don't be afraid. I, don't, I can't tell people enough. Don't be afraid to throw your bait into the heavy cover. I know you're worried it's a $4 crankbait. No, that's where the fish are. You can see today when we caught fish, we we're basically all the way, all the time, off, off of logs, off of stick-ups, off of weeds. And we were, we're in the junk, and we lost, I lost some lures. But again, I caught plenty of fish. So don't be afraid, afraid to do that. Um, again, this, also, this bait also, I don't know if you can hear it, has a rattle in it. I like a bait with rattles in it. Uh, the other bait uh, that we did try this morning, and I didn't have that much success, was a little uh, buzz bait. The fish weren't, weren't uh, top feeding this morning, and we couldn't, I couldn't raise any fish up with this, but we did try it. Again, I wouldn't put it uh, away, but uh, I think this is an excellent top water bait to use too. I like a small top water bait too sometimes, especially in this cover. You can work it underneath a lot of stuff that maybe a little bit, uh, a bigger one. Uh, won't do. So there's the tackle box tip uh, for this week on Delaware Valley Outdoors. Very nice fish. Well, we had a great day here fishing. We caught bait, bait fish on spinner baits, crank baits, worms. Uh, I'd just like to thank Bob Smith for allowing us on the lake today. Uh, if you have any questions about the, the club, uh, we have a number at the end of the show that you can, you can get and to give them a call. It's a great facility. They have uh, trap shooting, archery, uh, pistols, uh, trap again, and also this lake. Uh, and you can join. It's a rel relatively uh, inexpensive uh, thing and it's a great place to enjoy yourself. So we'll see you next week on another edition of Delaware Valley Outdoors.